Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jason with uh, JW Classic VW. We are back at the garage doing some work on the 40 HP. Uh, just a little tuning and got to get that 20 minute break in run done. So uh, stay tuned. After this intro, we'll get right into that content. <laughs> Time to get that uh, 20 minute break in run done. On off switch for power to the coil. Got a little refurbished battery down here. Fantastic electrical tape holding it in position. Oh yeah, baby. Let's get ready to run this sucker up. All right, so I got my power switch on. It's giving me power over to the coil, which will give us power to the ignition system. This is like my start button, just like if you had ignition key, ignition key on. Let's see how many time, how long it takes to get our start up. Ooh, almost. Look, any uh, break in, we want to try to get those RPMs up, so I'm going to hook up the timing light and then uh, I'll be able to tell what my RPMs are. degrees I want 30 30 30 degrees at 3,000 rpms make sure we disconnect our vacuum whenever we set our timing we hook the vacuum up after we finish timing
now that we got our all warmed up time instead it's time to go ahead and adjust the carburetor all right guys i want to go ahead and take a minute just a step right back kind of like before we get into the whole tuning of the idle speed on the carburetor once it's warmed up pause for a second guys and let's look at a few things that need to be right before we get into all of that timing has been set we already kind of went through that we also have brand new spark plugs that are gapped properly brand new leads brand new spark plug wires and uh, we know everything else is working the right way so tuning the carburetor is the last step everything else needs to be good to go along with adjusting your valves which these have been initially adjusted i'm gonna have to after i do i'm gonna do one more um heat cycle and then go ahead and adjust them again but all of that stuff needs to be right timing valves your spark plugs spark plug gap your wires all of this needs to be in good working order before you move on to your idle adjustment because once you go to do this it's not going to ever be right if none of that other stuff is good to go let's move to the side of the carburetor and talk about what we're going to be doing in a minute let's go ahead and remove the vacuum line so you guys can see a little better okay now we're at the side of the carburetor and these are where your two main adjustments are going to happen especially if you have a new carburetor let's say you've rebuilt your carburetor you've got all your base settings all good to go don't forget like you don't adjust idle with this right here your choke should be in the appropriate position appropriate position oh you guys don't know what the appropriate position is for your choke well let me show you on this carburetor where it is remove the air cleaner for a second See his two little dashes right here? There's a mark on here for the choke adjustment. And you want the choke to be right about there, right in between, that little line there. Older carburetors will still have the mark on the choke that you're adjusting. All you're doing is there's a spring in there. And you're preloading that spring to where it's supposed to be, where this flap is open. See, I pull off that right there, and the choke goes right to here. That's about where it's at when it's at its proper adjustment. You might not have those on your carburetor. If you don't, this is kind of where you want it to be. So I'll shut this down right here, this flap, and then just put it all the way down. And right here, off to the side, you can see I'm not making any kind of contact. What you want to do is kind of tighten that screw down and then back off a little bit to where it is not making any contact. Cool. Now let's talk again about the mixture screw, which is the bottom there, and the air bypass, which is the big one. So right now we're at the base settings, which is the screw is tightened in all the way and then backed out two and a half to three times from the uh, base setting. We want to make sure that you don't do is don't over tighten these bad boys because the seats inside of there they will uh you'll jack them up there's not a whole lot of pressure that these can take they're really sensitive to that so don't tighten them down too much or or if you already have you probably jacked them up so you can replace those seats well i've done it on idfs before i don't know if you can do it on these but uh, if you've tightened it down too much and you don't have any adjustment anymore you probably jacked up your carburetor sorry if you don't have access to the mixture screw down here you might have a plug in there you can pull that plug out so you do have access to the mixture screw go ahead and grab yourself two screwdrivers so you're going to want like a a smaller one or like a precision type screwdriver to get in here to the mixture screw and this is just you're you you're adding and subtracting the air fuel mixture how much of that is going into the carburetor this right here is just controlling your idle speed really so like air you're cutting air off and cutting air in you're taking air out you're putting air in with the big screw this is the main adjustment you're doing to get down your idle speed now i'm gonna be setting mine around 900 rpms once you start driving around and you play with it some more you'll figure out if you want to drop that a bit a little bit lower the book like the blue book the vw blue book says somewhere like six to seven hundred rpms so it, you can adjust that idle down lower it really depends on what the temperature is that you're trying to keep your vw at now this one is you know, we're in texas there's a lot of heat down here i don't have the normal thermostat set up on this yes you guys can beat me up in the comments about that but yeah we're going to start off with adjusting the big screw to get us down to an idle where, where we want to be and then you're going to see me by ear i'm going to be listening to the engine 
to where about dies off. It's, it's gonna start to die off a little bit. You're gonna start to decrease idle speed, and then I'm gonna open it back up just a little bit until it, it comes back up again. And that's about where I wanna be. Idle speed here, go ahead and adjust this one in clockwise until she starts to die, then let her back off again. You're gonna see me going back and forth between the two until I get the idle speed I want. Then I'm gonna bump this bad boy a few times and we should be good to go on, I guess the get her on the road setup. This is also gonna be adjusted based off of how the car runs and drives. Once you guys get her out on the road, you're gonna play around with this. That's why you have to have a tool bag with some basic tools in it to be able to do some carburetor adjusting on the fly. A lot of this is done by ear. Let's get back to the video now, guys, and do some tuning. All right, I've got that idle down about where I want it. I just turned in my large adjusting screw or air bypass screw until it started to die off. Now, I just did the mixture screw, about a quarter turn, and dropped it down a little bit more. I'm gonna go one more turn. That's too much, so I'm gonna come back. Go ahead and bump it a couple times. Pretty good. All right, large screw. I'm going to go a little bit more. Give it a couple minutes or a couple seconds to adjust to that. Idle is now down to about 960. I'm gonna go another quarter. If you're struggling, I'm gonna open up the mixer screw a little bit. it a couple times. A little rough, a little rough. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the mixture just a little bit more. pretty good. That's how you adjust the carburetor. You're going to play with the, the first adjustment is with your large bypass. You get the idle down about where you want it. You kind of clean it up with your mixture screw. You kind of go back forth a little bit, but uh, that's about it. She's idling pretty good. See that dew? Legend right there. So idle drops down to about 900 to 1,000. That's why I like to have it. Let's go ahead and shut her off and go ahead and see how she starts. Yeah, she sounds pretty good. And we'll see how she starts up. Ignition on. Let 
bumper a couple times. Yeah, she's running good. I'm gonna check and see what this alternator is charging at. And that is a wrap on the 40 horsepower motor. Yeah, that's about it, guys. I'll be saving this for a future project. And uh, I'm not sure, maybe it's a little bit of tech videos here and there, but uh, that's about it for that uh, that engine build. Well, I hope everybody is having a good week so far. Weekend is coming. I'll probably put this video out either Friday or Saturday. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed the build. Don't forget to check out the build uh, list video playlist down below. I will talk to you guys in the next video. This is Jason with JW Classic BW, and I'm out of here.